It's getting hot out there, Joe. What's getting hot out there? I'm not even talking about the weather. Yeah. I'm talking about the greatest show on earth. Which is? The one we've been waiting for. The the Vaccinodrome. The Vaccinodrome. Welcome to Vaccinodrome. We're in Mad Max territory, are we? Is it that bad? We could be. We could be. Remember two weeks ago we mentioned the possibility of, if not actual food shortages, of visibly shelves in supermarket stores. Oh, well, actually, Looking empty. That's that's growing. People are like yeah. posting their photos of the local stores and a bit worried, yeah. you know. Yeah, that that's, that, that's we're not going to get into that really, but I suppose, but because it's we'll wait and see. But it, I thought it was interesting. But you but, see how that invites Mad Max scenario. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there no, won't be toilet paper. They'll be fighting over anymore. Yeah, yeah, it'll be over more essential things yeah. like food. Uh, well, it may happen, but it was interesting that this week, <clears throat> um, there was. I mean, they've been talking in the UK at least. The UK seems to be like, you know, um, almost, I don't know, I think they're kind of like almost, they have been the most dysfunctional, at least in terms of the effects on society. Uh, You've seen most dysfunction, um, maybe, it it might be a few other countries like Australia or something, but certainly the UK seems very dysfunctional in terms of how how this whole COVID pandemic business has has affected society, you know. Um, They... There's a, there's a, there's a an NHS or government whatever, uh, trace. Test and trace, app mm. that people long ago and other countries had as well. Long ago countries that people were encouraged to download, right? Right. ID being that, you have it down on your, you have it on your phone and uh, you're basically monitored, by, when that's downloaded, it's a tracking device basically. <laughs> it's kind of funny because people like for conspiracy theorists for years have been worried about the government tracking you, you know, and, yeah, so, and even Ed, Edward Snowden, you know, government, you know, spying on people's phone calls and their activities and their cell phone calls. And obviously the ability to track phone, uh, cell phones is, is, has been there for a long time, right? To track people and even to fire uh, missiles from drones at people based on their, uh, based on their cell phone location. But, so it's certainly been a, a, a thing amongst conspiracy theorists that, you know, cell phones, you can be tracked with your cell phones and stuff, you know, kind of an Orwellian uh, future scenario, whatever. But here, as a result of this pandemic, um, people have willingly downloaded a tracking device onto their cell phones so that government could track them and with the, the purpose of it being to, uh, if you happen to wander by someone who later uh, or shortly afterwards had tested positive, for by, by some test, you know, some test of, of dubious uh, reliability, if they tested positive for COVID, uh, then anybody within a certain vicinity would get pinged on their phone to say, The Oops. pingdemic. So they called it a pingdemic, and mm. they have been doing it for a while calling it a pingdemic. But the problem was it got so farcical that uh, you can read some of the, we don't have them right here, but you can look it up, uh, uh, various mm. major... UK supermarket chains and, and certain places were apologizing to their customers for empty shelves because their suppliers were not able to supply uh, basic foodstuffs to the supermarkets because of the pandemic, i.e. a lot of the suppliers, employees, were having to stay at home because they were pinged and told that they happened to walk by someone when they were out in the, in the, in the town or the city um, the day before uh, and they walked by someone who later test, uh, that day tested positive or something um, and they have to, they, those people who get pinged and told that they walked past someone who tested positive or were in the same store as someone who tested positive they have to go and self, self-isolate or stay at home for 10 days so 10 right. days off work uh, and this was having happening so much that I mean that's just one sample of the of the of the population obviously who work in the in, in the supply uh, chains for 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 supermarkets yeah for food <clears throat> f- food supply chains for supermarkets but they were having problems with staff because they were all staying at home because they were being pinged on their phones so you imagine you have to I have another example of, of a relative who's in the hospitality sector in the UK and up till this point employers uh, like hers were very much enforcing on behalf of the government. They didn't want to lose either um, important contracts to themselves or secondarily, they didn't want to lose the, basically the backup funding they were getting from the state during the lockdowns to keep them afloat, Mm -hmm. the companies. Well, this employer told his staff to quietly just remove this app from your phone because 
they're all getting pinged. Right. And uh, because one person tested positive, the 10 people who are listed and it's connected via the app yeah. as having shared a shift with them. Right. Three day, anytime within the last X number of days mm -hmm. must all stay at home according to the app. Right. And too many people, like people are smart. Oh, they're starting to get, apply some of their smarts to this and they're going, hmm, well, I could just ignore this or I could take advantage of it, still get paid to stay at home. Right. So people, it's, it's the farce of it. It's that an element of it where people are basically taking advantage of taking it. advantage of it to get free days off work. Yeah, and this was causing uh, uh, problems. And the, and the result was the same with the with the suppliers in the supermarkets. The result was the same that um, the government, I think, announced that uh, anybody who gets pinged and works in food supply for supermarkets does not have to self isolate at home for ten days. Uh, probably a lot of people were disappointed uh, right. that, that, that that happened because they don't get 10 days, 10 days paid leave. Um, but yeah, it's, it's completely far scale. I mean, you have to imagine the situation where you're simply walking down, you work in that industry and you're walking down the high street, you go into a shoe store, ha look at some shoes, walk back out and go home. Later that day, your phone pings and says you have to stay at home for 10 days. Because one of the shopper at the time... In the same shop as you. Right. Have, later, that person decided to go home and do a ladder flow test and a notoriously unreliable ladder flow test, these are the ones we were talking about last week, yeah. where they can be made positive by putting fruit juice on it. Like, uh, young kids in school had figured out that if you put this uh, fruit juice on, on, on a ladder flow test, you get two days off school. So <laughs> that's how reliable it was. And that's the same test that the health minister, we talked about that last week as well, the UK health minister, he's just come out of isolation. He did a ladder flow test, a really dodgy, known, unreliable, a lateral flow test for COVID and decided that it and came up with it. It's kind of like a pregnancy test and it shows you a little blue line. Even a faint blue line means you're positive. He had to stay at home uh, supposedly for 10 days and then because Boris Johnson and the finance minister also had been having a uh, uh, hanging out with him at some point, they decided they had to go and uh, stay at home as well. So they have the kind of a whole government basically potentially uh, out of action basically on the on the basis of of, of a dodgy test. Yeah. It's it's like it's hard not to see it as a, for as, as a bit of a farce. I mean, it's yeah. but before now it's become quite farcical. But certainly stuff like this, it's just turned into a it's just nonsense. Like to the point that even Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, when he when he when the suggestion was that he should isolate because he got he got pinged, he was like, Nah, come on, I don't have no. We'll, we'll do something else. Like and and there was outcry from I don't know the media report. There's an outcry. And the rules have to apply to him too. So off you go, home, 10 days. But then... There's no outcry, really. No. I, I have a good idea who it is in the UK. You know the SAGE, yeah. which is a formal government advisory body. Mm -hmm. There's another group called ISAGE, which stands for Independent SAGE. These people are the ones pushing for zero COVID in the mm -hmm. UK, and they have been throughout. Um this is a side note, so I won't go on too long, but it was discovered this week by Kit Clarenberg. He's the guy who writes for The Guardian. The one of its, um, someone on its advisory board is Christopher Steele. Right. This entire time, someone who's been coming at the government from stage left to pressure them to do more. Boris isn't doing enough. He's, right. he's, he's nowhere near. Look at all his failures. Look, at, he's not doing enough. Someone on that side, separate NGO with public trust of well, some private trust rather funding one of them is chris Steele, and he's the g notorious Just guy at the heart of Russia yeah. yeah he's the dodgy dossier guy he's the bike guy commission commissioned the donald trump uh getting peed on by hookers in a russian hotel room golden uh, gate go yeah golden shower gate, golden shower gate right. uh yeah that so that guy is kind of has an influence over what the uh, british citizens are are not doing in terms of uh uh, the pandemic right okay <clears throat> that's fine that's that's totally legit that sounds t totally legit to me he there should be more people like him i mean it fits anyway for me with uh, his history he certainly lends and lends itself to uh, his expertise lends itself to uh, this particular situation yeah. i think yeah, but Scotty, throw up the picture. I just want to put so vaccination. Well, before we go, yeah, yeah put up the, the Canadian thing. We'll just show it there. Uh, this is a picture from I saw this Toronto Airport, Canada, um, and it's it's basically real. it's real, yeah. And it's been it, there. We can read there's news articles about this being uh, implemented in on the orders of the Canadian version of the 
NTSB with the, the the transport authority in in the front and the Canadian government um, putting up these signs in major airports in Canada. And there you go, um, English, French, Chinese. Um, the ostensible reason is with that the caveat that we don't even know what a fully vaccinated passenger is anymore. Uh, well, you have to show. Well, you have to show your your vaccination uh, as passport. as we're going to talk about later. What it is to be fully vaccinated is changing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. But um, this is the first time we've seen anywhere really in the world that, that at least in the Western world, uh, physical, um, I suppose, a physical display of official government sanctioned segregation based on vaccination status. Uh, the ostensible reasons for doing this or the explanation why they're doing this is that uh, there's different requirements for air travel for people who are vaccinated and unvaccinated, which itself is kind of like, you know, part of the problem, but uh, so that you segregate these two people in two lines. It's not that one, it's like the people on the right there, they don't go into a, a meat grinder, like just, we'll make that clear, they're not going into any uh, camps or, 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 or with showers or anything like that. They're, they're getting on the plane as well, I think. If they if they qualify, um, it's just that they, they're streamlining the two processes because there's different. I suppose the people on the right have to produce more uh, justification for their air travel, whereas the people on the left just have to show their vaccination status. So even with that explanation, it's obviously still it's a concrete display of this, you know, of the segregation of people along vaccination status lines mm -hmm. in order to. Uh, avail themselves of what was formerly uh, a very basic civil liberty, i.e., to be able to travel. Yep. Um, but and it's not anymore. Discrimination based on something the our governments will say is justified, but it, whatever. In the end, it is a discriminatory process based on whatever standards you set. Mm -hmm. And uh, the terms people have used for medical apartheid is yeah. absolutely valid. For sure. Yep. South Africa is segregated on so, the basis of colour. Yeah. And you hear yeah. You. So, I mean, this is kind of, it's not slow. I was going to say it's a slow creep of slowly creeping into into a kind of apartheid-like totalitarian type situ situation, but it's been very quick. Uh, yeah. And usually they talk about a slow creep into kind of totalitarianism that uh, people really need to pay attention to and, and, and wake up at each stage. Um, the reason that it's usually understood or referred to as a slow creep is because that kind of thing usually has to happen in order at least to, for it to be implemented fully it has to happen in a, a slow way to pass below the radar of, of most people right to to to, to, to get past um public awareness and then one day they wake up and they're living in some kind of totalitarian state yeah, but that's not the, that's not really the case here this has been very quick right yeah but i suppose they had the it all happened as a result of the the terror that came down uh, in 2020 that, you know, many people were, as we've said before on the show, uh, terrorized beyond all reason, basically, beyond all justification. And of course, we have, we have the, that's not just our opinion, that's the opinion of the people, at least in the UK, who are actually doing the terrorizing. Mm -hmm. We've, we've uh, shown um, articles in the mainstream press from uh, a few weeks back were uh, members of SAGE, members of Sage from the behavioral scientists on, on that SAGE committee who were implementing the or planning and implementing the public messaging around the pandemic and what people should and shouldn't do. Hands, face, space, all those kinds Stay of things. Stay home, safe, safe. Those people said, they basically did, mea culpa, did a mea culpa and, and, and said that they went too far, that they mm -hmm. were using fear uh, in, a, in a kind of destructive way to 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 influence public opinion and that it was, I think they even used the word kind of totalitarian. Yes, or some, yes they did. They, they openly admitted that it was way beyond reason, yeah. you know. So that's how it's, it hasn't been a slow creep, it's been a fast creep in the sense because they used the full potential, the full power at their disposal, or the, the full knowledge they had of kind of human behavior and behavioral science and stuff and, and propaganda and hitting all the right buttons uh, in a population in order to get them well, to get them to be afraid, basically. Um, I mean, an example of it is that the, that same British Health Secretary, <laughs> he, after coming out of his dodgy quarantine for 10 days just yesterday or today, I think, uh, said, told people that, you know, he's fine now. It's all good. I had no symptoms, but it's all good. And he said, people 
shouldn't be he told people that they should not cower uh, before the coronavirus or before COVID they should not cower anymore and there was an outcry again another outcry mm. from I don't know people on social media people on Twitter the media or or a half a dozen people on Twitter yeah. who responded to him because he posted this on Twitter that people shouldn't cower anymore and then he had to apologise for not cowering he apologised for saying that they shouldn't cower Right. Which the implica well, implication is that you should cower. Right. So continue to cower. Uh, and cower is an interesting word because it's the same root as coward. But anyway, it doesn't, it, it's not, it's not a very honorable, it doesn't conjure up a very honorable picture in, in, in a person. You know, the idea of someone cowering, you know, it has that idea of uh, a weakness and, and cowardice. Anyway. Yeah. So in Following response on. to all this, mm -hmm. Another thing, the media, we keep referring to the media here as a bit of a problem in all of this. And I think over the past, this weekend and this past, this weekend and last weekend as well, but particularly this weekend, it kind of gained a lot of uh, speed, was protests against these mandatory vaccinations mm -hmm. which have been spreading <clears throat> over the past couple of weeks since France really was the first country to kind of say, in a way, mandatory vaccinations by the back door for everybody yeah first and foremost the healthcare workers like that's directly mandatory or you lose your job for the rest of the population who are uh, if you're not vaccinated no bars restaurants uh, major events like uh, ball games whatever no movie theaters yeah uh, so that's forced vaccination by by another means right yeah so and some countries didn't front load it's it's almost like there's a kind of a more rational mind at work in some places uh -huh. Speaking to what you were saying about s the slow creep mm -hmm. versus all at once, all at once yeah. the smarter ones, so to speak, are suggesting, well, just a couple of venues. Mm. Italy, for example, on Thursday announced that they would also have a green pass, but it would only be needed up front to eat and drink inside a restaurant or, or bar. As of this week, that's all. But the thing is... Because of the global nature of media, once someone like France, a neighboring country of Italy's, of course, announced such a comprehensive program, it was almost too fast out of the, the box to the race to get there first and mm -hmm. show the comprehensive <laughs> full package, you know? Mm -hmm. And everyone got to hear about it. It didn't matter that Italy's is only a little measure, any different from last week, the way you're used to living last week. Right. So this week's a little bit more. Because you got mass protests in Italy as well this week. Right. In similar numbers that you got in France because people are kind of, those who are resisting this anyway, in their minds, they're going, I won't wait for the formal announcement of what exactly I can and can't do with right. my, my new COVID pass. Yeah. I'm just going to assume it's going to be like France or Israel. Right. Another extreme case. Um, so what are we talking about in, yeah? B before we go to the product, do you want to, play the there's a two minute clip from the new prime minister of israel why not he uh, was that's nice and orwellian yeah we like like a bit of orwellian a this, this is so part, extreme so. like even i was a bit shocked you were super excited about it <laughs> do we have it there scotty um i should introduce the guy actually he's the new prime minister of israel you're so used to benjamin netanyahu it's hard to believe that there's someone else in charge of israel and, after and, almost 20 years i'm even creepier as it turns out. Possibly. Uh, there he is there. Well, let's, let's play it and we'll see what viewers think. Is this guy better, worse, and whatever? And that's than Lawrence movie? Fox for people in the UK. That's, uh, he's an actor, fairly famous actor in the UK, and he's the one who posted this for the first time in my life. I am absolutely lost for words. But <laughs> <laughs> אבל יש רגע ויש מקום שבו הדיון הזה צריך לעצור, והוא עצם החיים של כולנו. המדע הוא חד וברור. החיסונים עובדים, הם יעילים ובטוחים. לצעירים באופן כמעט מוחלט, למבוגרים הם יעילים אבל לא מספקים. מעל מיליארד אנשים בעולם כבר התחסנו. אזרחים יקרים. סרבני החיסונים מסכנים את בריאותם, את סביבתם ואת החופש של כל אזרחי ישראל. הם מסכנים את החופש שלנו לעבוד, את החופש של ילדינו ללמוד, החופש לחגוג שמחות עם המשפחה. 
סרבני החיסונים פוגעים בכולנו. כי אם כולם יתחסנו, כולם יוכלו לקיים את שגרת חייהם. אבל אם מיליון ישראלים ימשיכו לא להתחסן, זה יאלץ את שמונה מיליון האחרים בסוף להסתגר בבתים שלהם. לכן הקבינט קיבל היום החלטה שהחל מהשמונה באוגוסט סרבן חיסון לא יוכל להיכנס לקולנוע, לתיאטרון, לבית הכנסת, ללונה פארק, למשחק כדורגל או לכל פעילות מעל מאה איש בפנים או בחוץ, אלא אם הוא יביא בדיקת קורונה שלילית על חשבונו. כן, הוא יישא במלוא עלות הבדיקה. אין שום סיבה שמשלמי המיסים ואנשים שכן מקיימים את חובתם האזרחית להתחסן, יממנו בדיקות למי שמסרב להתחסן. בתחום הטיסות, המחוסנים יוכלו לטוס למדינות הנקיות ולחזור, ולאחר קבלת תוצאות בדיקת הקורונה בישראל, <תקיד> הם יהיו פטורים <תקיד> מבידוד. <תקיד> אך לעומתם, מי שמסרבים להתחסן, ייכנסו לבידוד של שבוע מכל מדינה שיחזרו ממנה. <תקיד> הפעולות הללו יסייעו לבלום את התחלואה. אני פונה מכאן לכל מי שמכיר סרבן חיסון. שכנעו אותו, תסבירו לו, שלא יפגע באחרים, תשכנעו אותה, תסבירו לה, אל תוותרו. I'm sorry for anyone who couldn't watch that and is listening instead because he, there were English subtitles up to his speech, but it's basically like haranguing. There's only a million people out of nine million in Israel who have not gotten the vaccine, right. and that's not good enough. He announced the same, basically in two minutes there, we heard from him exactly the same program Macron announced in some more detail yeah. 10 days ago. I mean, his justification was, he, he, you notice he didn't, that's just a statement of mandating vaccine, vac, vac, vaccines uh, for the entire population. Again, yeah. kind of by the back door by restricting their freedoms and, and threatening them essentially with not being able to enjoy life in the not, way they had yeah. before. But there was basically never, there was at no point almost, except for a tiny part it was of, of a few words, at no point did he explain why this is happening and this is the thing people are listening to all of this mandating vaccine vac this or these orders of effective man uh, mandating of vaccines for an entire population and when they do that rarely if ever do you hear an explanation why they're doing that why it's necessary what's the problem why are you doing this why are you it's, is it just assumed are people just assuming that there's a reason and that everybody knows what the reason is the only thing he said there was that you have to stop hurting people. Stop yes. hurting people but he, and get vaccinated. That's it. That's the explanation. That if you don't get vaccinated, the reason he said yeah. all of that is because otherwise, if you're not vaccinated, you're hurting people. Yes, and we don't specify that if you, the remaining one million of the nine million, do not get vaccinated, you're going to force, I, I have nothing to do with it, you're, you're going to naturally somehow force the other 8 million to remain locked in their homes. Yeah. He threatened lockdown on the whole country until everyone Everyone's else. Therefore, turning the majority against that minority yeah, who yeah. are not. Well, that's the clear... Very, that's the cause. Very, that's as far yeah. as they'll go with explaining a why. Yeah, well, so there is no explanation, although... There is uh, no scientific, and, separate no. from government lockdown policy, there is right. no reason why. But, and the, there's a good reason why they don't explain it, because the science is certainly, is not on their side, at least not in the way that they would like, they, they would like you to think it is, that, that people who are unvaccinated are somehow a danger to people who are vaccinated, or that, that they're continuing the pandemic, or something along those lines. I mean, you know, we'll get, we'll look at a little bit of the science behind that. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, that's, and there's a clear, in that it's really hard to avoid drawing the conclusion that the motivation, not just from him, but from any other government that is mandating vac vaccines in this way, that, the, that they're trying to weaponize one section of the population, the vaccinated, against the other. They're trying to, to, to turn society, uh, one part of society against the other, one part of the population against the other, based on vaccine status. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's and people single, should be out in the streets. That's why they are, I suspect. It's the single most insidious thing about give, this. Not... The fact of the vaccines, those who are unvaccinated, it, your worst fear isn't the vaccine. It's, it's the insidious nature of using... And what, and what could happen to society if they push through with yeah. this? They're going to, I mean, do you think it's, which is worse, you know, obviously we've talked about the, the actual relative dangers of, of this virus to, you know, anyone in the population, the vast majority of the population are not in any danger from it. Uh, and you compare that to the danger or what could happen in society, the dangers that would present themselves in society if this kind of a draconian or totalitarian government policy of 
turning populations against each other, turn, turning people in society yeah. against each other, the results of that, the precedent, by, for anybody with any sense, the will understand that it far outweighs yeah. any danger from, from a virus. Go to the blaze there, Scotty, the, the, that, that I just sent you, and there's, you, have to, you have to go down to the bottom of the... Uh, yeah, you don't want... You, we can stop text center. You know, so scroll down. I think you have to read more at the bottom. Anyway, this is uh, MSNBC. Just click on read more, and then go down to the bottom. There's a video. Uh, should I should have just sent you the link to the video. Actually, oh, her. Brzezinski's daughter. That's, yeah, Brzezinski's daughter. And she leads a, she's leading a, a panel of uh, people who are discussing about... Look what, they're, look, look what they're talking about. The case for vaccine mandates. This is in America. So this isn't a European thing or in any other part of the world. This is also or just a European thing, this is an American thing, this is fully, fully uh, front and centre in terms of the, the discourse, at least among most of the media and, and government. Jen Psaki, for example, is a proponent of it as well, of mandated, or vaccine mandates in the US as well. But just play it there, Scotty, and um, I'm sorry I haven't jumped directly to the point where I wanted to go. I mean, it's a, it's a, there's a whole screen. These okay. folks are choosing yeah. a horrible lifestyle of self-inflicted pain. My God, that straight talk <laughs> there from Alabama's Republican Governor Kay Ivey about the unvaccinated creating a pandemic within themselves. Let's yeah. bring in Pulitzer Prize winning columnist. <laughs> Pause it there for a second. Creating a pandemic within themselves. Like your own personal pandemic. It's like your own personal earthquake. You well, know? Ironically, uh, if you remember what the sage behavioral experts said, um, the one success of this entire thing has been a pandemic of psychology. Right, for In sure. a sense, this is purely a pandemic of the mind inside your head. Yeah, and it's the whole message there is stop killing yourselves. Get vaccinated. Would you stop killing yourself and just get... I mean, how stupid are people when they just... They, they, won't, even, they won't even protect their own lives. These people are ridiculous. Uh, jump forward. See that guy on the right with the glasses? <laughs> Go forward from that point that where you are right, right there. Uh, can you scroll forward? Yeah. He, bl he blabs on there a bit, but he's later on. Just scroll through until you get a couple other people. They jump in and then go back to when you see him pop up again, play it there. That's just more talking heads and more of the same bullshit, basically. All, I think it's after this girl, actually. That he, okay, just play him there. Another element of protection, of course, are masks. We've reported this week that there have been some discussions between the White House and the CDC about reinstituting mask mandates. They're not there yet, but they're not ruling out down the road. We're seeing some jurisdictions like Los Angeles County already bring them back. How do you see this play out if, and let's hope it doesn't get there, but if in the weeks ahead there is a consensus that whether it's from the federally mandated or whether it's just a lot of local governments saying masks have to come back, how does that play? I mean, we've seen a rise of masks a little bit. There's a return in places like Washington, New York. But whether it's places where there's a lot of vaccine hesitancy or even places where people are vaccinated, there was such a sense of this summer of being relieved, of, of, of not having to wear masks anymore. How will this play? Is this a political firestorm waiting if masks are asked to come back? I don't think it's a far. So I, I think the fact and the point that you just touched on is that we've been there before. So I think it was a lot harder the first time around too, because we're you know we're creating new behavior versus returning to kind of behavior we've already been through. So look, whether it's a mandate on mask, a mandate of vaccine is at this point there is a percentage of the population that who cares whether they're angry or upset about that. This is just there's 330 million people in this country. We need to protect ourselves. And as and as, as Willie and Alicia mentioned, look, there's there's been mandates on throughout time. I grew up having to get a smallpox vaccine. We all did other vaccines also. So I, I'm done worrying about what people think. I'm done worrying about is there going to be a firestorm? Whether it's a mandated mask, whether it's a mandated vaccine, there's an idiot percentage of this population that just needs to be told what to do and guess what you don't have a choice to the 88 percent of this population <laughs> who he did not get a smallpox ne vaccine ne need i know those ended in the 1930s he's yeah. full of shit there's an idiot population 88 percent of this population or an idiot yeah percent of this population who just need to be told what to do and guess what you don't have a choice um these are adults you know um they're, they're, they're thinking they're, they're the adults. He's, 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 it's complete bullshit. Like, I mean, there, and there's many people like him. They're very dangerous people. He's lying. There has never been a mandated vaccination in, in living memory for adults. Right. There's required vaccinations, and even then, there's wiggle room for children. Yes. 
There's no, there's no, no, ma- there's never been a mandated vaccination for for adults. So he's full of shit. So, um, but notice that he said there's an idiot percentage of this population who just need to be told what to do. Again, it shows his stupidity. He is surely it's, in that percentile. He is in that percentile, and all the people who have already got the vaccine are the ones who have been done what what they were told. Right. The people who are not doing what they t- are, are told to do are not idiots. They're the ones who are thinking for themselves. They have a greater thinking capacity by definition Amen. than people like him who, without a second thought, blindly followed the order to get a vaccine. He was first, he, him and other and millions like him were first in line, unthinking completely. That's the definition of an idiot. Him. So, all, so he totally turned it on his head. Yeah. You know, the, tr- the truth is that the 88% of the population are the ones who blindly got a vaccine without thinking. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that in a pejorative way, the way he is. I'm just saying that they, those people were not it's thinking. It's okay, you were scared, you followed. Right. And, it's all right. And, and they, thought, sin, they but... thought they were doing the right thing, but they were outsourcing their thinking to government. Mm-hmm. From start to finish. You know, and it's on issues of your own health and what's going on in the world. Kids outsource their thinking most of the time, willingly, to parents. Because they're children. Adults generally shouldn't do that. Adults are meant to think for themselves, live their own lives, decide for themselves, in particular, on issues relating to their own health. He's not one of those people. And, and everyone else who got the vaccine are not one of those people. Anyway. Right. Uh, so let's get back to, that was just to follow on from the Israeli dude, whatever his name is, I don't really care. Um, uh his draconian spiel as well and this space and there's been, there's been a few people in France not not so notable but someone like him in France who basically was a few weeks ago was saying that people need to be just dragged in uh, in handcuffs and forcibly stabbed in the arm anyway so that kind of very dangerous talk and I, what, yeah. what blows my mind is that or so, so many people don't see a problem with that I think a lot of them do even the ones who, who got vaccines and stuff but obviously go mm, that's a bit you know, the idea of dragging people in handcuffs into some kind of a room and mm-hmm. forcibly stabbing them in the arm with a medication seems a wee bit, mm, you know, a bit off, really. You know, I'm not sure that's... Is that civil society? I don't think so, you know. But but it should... It's obviously much... It should be much clearer to, to, to other people. Hopefully it's clearer to other people that that's ridiculous yeah. and is uh, totally unacceptable and should never be acceptable. And if you accept that you no longer live in a free society. Yeah. Um, we talked about the speed of change earlier and it's noticeable to me that the speed of change in the language and the kind of aggressive rhetoric, I think that, that, that alone, never mind what exactly our government says should or should not happen this week or today or this hour and what, how everyone should behave. It's the tone of the language, I think, yeah. that has, has caused the global reaction. Would you call it protesters. Hitlerian? Yeah. You would? I would. That's very dangerous. I think say it's, that. it's fair to say. Um, Spellbinding. As I right. mentioned, it's not happening. You know, Italy did a little crack in the door. Can we get in here? Denmark, another government, um, <clears throat> they actually mandated a, the COVID pass back in April. But minus any, you must get this job, just to get the pass accepted first. Yeah, yeah. So the, the governments are doing it smarter or stupider yeah. Yeah, 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 in yeah. how they're hitting people. But it's the tone. You remember I noticed with surprise last week or two shows ago, at most two weeks ago, how this had become the lingo in just the last few days in early July about how there's only a pandemic happening among the young vaccinated. For the rest of us, it's Tuesday. Yep. Or Sunday. That's a common, now that's how they're speaking commonly now. Um, Except. But the, the, yeah, the aggression of the language. Although is, that's changing is, as well. Because even for vaccinated people, the pandemic isn't over anymore, uh, as we'll see. But yeah. before we get on to that, let's just look at the response to this kind of thing to give people a bit of uh, hope, uh, because certainly you probably haven't um, come across this, um, probably not in the mainstream media very much at all, some kind no. of token reference to it and stuff. But this past weekend, there's been a lot of protests around the world. Uh, what do we, where do we want to start? Well, let's start with Paris. Um, so these... This one's probably a Twitter video. The uh, it's red pill lead is the name. That's the one. Have a look at this. This is Paris yesterday.
Okay, next one. Um, French media, by the way, reported it as uh, several thousand people. That was one protest at one venue. There were multiple protests in Paris alone yesterday. This is Dublin yesterday. Media reported as several hundred far-right fascists. That's scumbag media, like. There were black, white children, grandparents. Yeah, fascist children. Everyone. Yeah, fascist children, and right-wing fascist uh, children. Uh, uh, there was one MP or TD MP uh, who said, he, honestly, he's anti-lockdown, but he said, honestly, I would say between twelve and 20,000 people. Probably the, one of the largest protests in Dublin in, in decades. So have a look here. Look at them fascists. Look at that man in his cap. Fascist cap. No, oh, look, the Zeke Heil. Look at that. The Zeke Heil and those two. Look at awful. Isn't that clapping? Mm, no, I don't know. The, the hand was raised above Is the Is that a Nazi level. salute? Okay. Well, there's a Nazi salute there, yeah, for sure. That woman there, definite Nazi. <laughs> Look at those Nazi glasses. Is that a Nazi flag? Mm, I think so. Yeah, it I looked a bit it looks a, like Definitely today. looks a bit nationalist to me. There's another Nazi flag. Look at all those Nazi flags. Nazi as a nationalist, which is obviously if you're a nationalist, you're a Nazi. I don't think it's this video, but I saw one, and the woman walks by, and <laughs> oh look, that's a oh that's a local Nazi flag right there. <laughs> Freedom. What are those people? Is that isn't that a Nazi chant? Freedom. For, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Hitler was all about. It's definitely a dog whistle of, of the far right. Hitler was all about the freedom, like. Oh, here it is. Ha have a read of this this banner here. You can stick your poison vaccine up your arse. You can stick your poison vaccine up your arse. That's terrible. Only Nazi would say that. Chrysler, that guy's got a Chrysler t-shirt on him. Jesus Christ. <laughs> wasn't, Chry wasn't Chrysler... Wasn't that, didn't they have dealings with the Nazis back in the 40s? Anyway. <laughs> um, okay, next one. I, I don't know if I can take any more <coughs> Nazis. Now. Milan, yesterday. Ah, gee, Italy. Majestic. But Majestic. But Mussolini. How many Mussolinis are there? No, Nazi. Every one of them, a little Mussolini. You can just, you can feel the Nazi vibe coming off For that. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, pro they're probably out, what are they doing? Out looking for Jews or something? Those people. They're yeah, hunting the Jews, I suppose. Probably. They're 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 Nazis, Joe. They they don't think like you and me. They're. Hang on, they're saying the same thing as the Irish people were saying. They're saying liber libertad, liber libertad, yeah, something about freedom. Something about, yeah, yeah some Nazi slogan. Jeez. just wish there was a big, like, the police should fly over with a, with a load of liquid vaccine and just drop it on them all. And there were many, and many more besides. There was another massive one in London. Um, Trafalgar Square. That was just three. Well, give us a list. There was about we're talking many countries. At uh, least, at least, uh, at least a hundred me in major cities globally. Yeah. Um, major one is Sydney, right, where the police went ape shit on people, cracking heads. Yeah. Because there, it's in they're in winter they're in like mode and lockdown, lockdown, and you're not supposed. The, not allowed out. They're back in full lockdown where you're only allowed out for essentials. Basically. Yeah. The governor there said, "What's wrong with these people? What are they doing out? Who and what are they protesting against anyway?" And a reporter <laughs> in the press conference replied, like sheepishly, like uh, you. And he's like, but it's illegal. It's illegal to protest against me. Out here. Uh, so a big one in Sydney. There's an even bigger one in Melbourne, Australia. Um, but to give you an idea of the scale of it, in France alone yesterday, I say there were 100 in, in major cities globally. But in France alone, the connection, which is an English expat paper in France, gave an estimate of 168 cities of varying size. Towns, towns and cities. Towns yeah. and cities where there were protests held just yesterday because there have been ongoing protests daily um, ever since, especially since July 12th when Macron made that uh, TV announcement. Mm -hmm. 168 across France yesterday. Two small examples. There was one in Chambéry, which is a small town in the French Alps. The town's population is 59,000. The local media, presumably downplaying it like all the others do, mm -hmm. said there were 5,000 people there. That's almost one in 10 people yep, 10%. of just that town. Mm -hmm. 20 miles away in Annecy, it's a slightly smaller town. Turnout was officially three and a half thousand people. 
again, you, if you're reading the media headlines, several hundred, a few thousand yeah. here and there. Ah, Jesus. Well, it's relative globally, to Globally, that. maybe a hundred thousand. No, in France alone, in those cities, another example from France, a city of Vannes, which is only 40,000 people. It's over in Brittany, uh, the, the, north, the northwest corner of France. The, uh, officially, they said, ah, oh, two to three thousand, but organizers who were there, who tried and do a head count, they're yeah. not just trying to amplify the numbers, mm -hmm. as said, about 12,000 people. So a quarter. A quarter of the city, 168 cities. I did the math, and that's at least several million people on the streets in France alone mm -hmm. just yesterday. And have a look at the media and try and try and try and, try and get a number, uh, an, get idea an idea of the that scale. That was actually happening. You don't see it at all. Yeah. So the media is against us for 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 sure on this one. Like you know, you're not getting you're not getting an accurate picture of what's actually going on and what the population thinks. It's. Uh, I I don't want to go too far because <clears throat> you know we. we because protests, oh, like France has had major protests to the point where some of its own ministers publicly expressed fears two years ago that the state is trembling and may fall. Hmm. Well, how close was that, the yellow vest thing? We don't know. Hmm. So it's always dangerous to over, overstate your hand because protests, as is obvious by now, never actually lead to any positive change thus far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit of a... The, the yellow vest had some success in specific yeah. grievances they had new taxes against, you know, higher gas prices and so on. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I don't want to, you don't want to overstate the, the value in protesting either, in right. positive change, in affecting democratic change. Forget about it. But there is a tremendous, I think it's, it's, a, it's a war that's going on in the minds of people and there's tremendous psychological um, count, countermeasure, a supportive sucker to be had from knowing that there are large numbers of people out there mm -hmm. who see as you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, extrapolating out, I mean, who actually goes to protests? What is the ratio of someone who will go to a protest to those who feel likewise and see likewise? You can usually multiply it by 10. By 10, okay. So you've gone from several million people protesting in France to something in the order of tens of millions in a country of 60 million. 65, yeah. And you're approaching half the half population, the population yeah. are yeah, yeah. of like mind with you. And the media is one of its core psychological effects, even if it's not a conscious function on this part, a core psychological factor is the sense that you're isolated and alone. And that's why you go, oh, Jesus, okay, here, I'll pay more tax. I'll get the job, uh -huh. whatever. I'll sign on the line. Just leave me the hell alone. Well, if, if you don't know that so many people around you think likewise, you're more likely to, yeah. to feel the psychological which pressure. Is why Never mind, do anything about the which, situation. Which is the, re the media, governments and the media know that. And that's the reason why they play it down. Because they yeah. don't want to give that kind of support and sucker to uh, people in a country who, who they're trying to get to do something yeah they don't want to encourage them to, to not do what they want them what they want them to do um but obviously it's not right because you know people should have you know info should, people should be informed and, uh, and be able to make as informed decisions as they can but again like we said in previous shows there does seem to be a, a big split in the population between people who are able to take that responsibility of you know informing themselves and making their own decisions about their own health and other people who just aren't able or willing to do that and are entirely largely dependent on government to basically tell them what to do and they will automatically just do what government does now that's a like we, as we said in previous shows that's a big problem in any society i mean in good times and relatively easy times it's not a problem though two different types of people one more mature than the other can cohabitate you know, cohabitate and in, interact perfectly fine and find common ground and all that kind of stuff and talk about any, any anything on on the same level but when it comes to something like this we have brought in a, we have terrorized the population population with a fear of their own death you're really separating in a certain sense the wheat from the chaff people who will have a really strong knee-jerk emotional response to that and be terrified by it and just ask for government to come and solve the problem and they'll do whatever government says and other people are say hang on a minute you know they have a have a functioning bullshit meter i should I suppose you could say, and and that when they see government kind of sounding the alarm bells over something, and they quickly identify some kind of a possible agenda, then they're immediately sus suspicious of it, and don't take it too seriously, and so they're not as terrifiable or terrorizable as as those other people. But yeah, as we've been saying, it can lead to a division within society where the government basically weaponizes one section of the population against the other, and that's really bad for the people 
because these government people, government officials and stuff, they'll just disappear and, you know, they can just retreat after they've done their, their dirty work and leave, leave the people mm -hmm. uh, who, who uh, leave the people to clean up the mess, basically, or to try and, you know, put their society back together, you know. Yeah, uh, it's complete recklessness, really, and uh, to, towards the to, population. To fact check the official slash media line that the pandemic now only remains in the unvaccinated. In fact, it's the complete opposite. The pandemic is not occupying, it's not living as rent free in the heads of these people mm -hmm. as it is in those who are following blindly. That's, that's what we should talk about now, those who remain in the pandemic. Um, what the hell is going on with the Rona and with vaccines. Yeah. One place I want to leap off from this maybe is to look at Israel. Israel, yeah. because we played the Israeli, uh, new Israeli prime minister's statement where for him, it's just black and white. The pandemic only remains in this few. Everything else is hunky dory with the rest of us. But also last week was announced that um, Israel is suing Pfizer <laughs> because of an explosion in cases of coronavirus, mm -hmm. COVID-19, the illness rather, not just positive test cases, in the fully vaccinated. Um, Scotty, do we have the RT article on this? I think the headline is something like the CDC and the recommends vaccine booster. For, yeah, this is it. So this is from two days ago. CDC pitches COVID boosters for immunocompromised after Israel's suit. Israel suit against who? As Pfizer jab loses efficacy against Delta infections. Okay, let's look at this, some of this. Do you remember at the beginning of this? Pfizer's selling point was, oh, 90 to 95 percent efficacy against SARS-CoV-2, or, or rather against COVID-19. You won't get sick, almost guarantee it if you get this vaccine. This week, that's plummeted to 39 percent. Was that the case all along? Probably. Is it written? Is, it, is the thirty-nine percent uh, written there? Yeah. I'm in this sure article, here. I've seen it in another article. Um, and specifically, it's the Israeli government saying that their data is showing that at best it's thirty-nine percent, and they want to sue Pfizer and get an mm -hmm. answer from them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and yet he still wants to push the vaccine on everybody, right? Right. Uh, yes. Well. Here it is, there. The Pfizer shot was In Israel, moreover, Pfizer's COVID-19 shot has been steadily losing its overall effectiveness against the virus. Which health officials say is likely due to more, more contagious, contagious variant. variant. After reporting that the vaccine has slipped to 64% effectiveness against any level of symptomatic infection earlier, earlier this month, this July, the health ministry said it had further dropped to just 39% this week. And Israel, as you said in previous shows, is a good test case for this because Israel was first on with a mass vaccination. Of the population Ninety percent of the population is vaccinated you, with Pfizer at the beginning, like like first. So um, this Israel, like yeah, Israel is a good test case because you know enough time has elapsed to see if it's got this enduring kind of um, provides enduring protection, let's say against uh, against this Delta variant, and obviously it doesn't. So um, yeah, and you mentioned that the ninety five percent originally the 95%, mm -hmm. but there's a problem with the 95%. And if we just throw up, this is actually from the National Institute of Health. It's called uh, trials, <coughs> JPEG, Scotty. Um, one, of the, one of the JPEGs. It's just a screen grab from uh, the paper, the the study or the paper on the on the Pfizer trials uh, that produced- From the, last the, year, I from, guess. Yeah, that produced, yeah, from last year, that produced the Pfizer vaccine and this uh, efficacy of 95%. Uh, as you can see, their uh, vaccine efficacy, efficacy uh, and that's the number of. So this is a study, there, the Pfizer study that produced this uh, Pfizer mRNA vaccine. It was a trial of forty thousand or so, forty three thousand people, and uh, the, supposedly the results was that it was ninety five percent efficient, and that's the one you just quoted. Uh, uh -huh. That has now dropped to thirty nine percent, and that's not surprising because. Um, there's two different things in terms of this idea of efficacy. There's relative risk reduction from a vaccine mm -hmm. and absolute risk reduction. And the difference between those two is, for example, um, if you see uh, 
the 95% comes from um, the, the difference, the, the percentage difference between people who, for example, it shows there that people who got symptomatic COVID-19 uh, out of the total number, yeah, uh, which is about half the the half the half the the trial participants, which is about twenty thousand. Only eight of them got symptomatic COVID, uh, and only one got severe COVID. Compared to people who didn't get the vaccine, which was in the case of symptomatic COVID, one hundred and sixty-two, and the case of severe COVID, it was nine. So the difference between obviously between nine and one there is ninety percent, and the difference between one hundred and sixty-two and eight is ninety-five uh, percent. Right. So you have a ninety-five percent reduction with people who got the vaccine, i.e., only eight. That's a 95% reduction from 162 and a 90% reduction from nine who didn't get the vaccine to one who did who did get the vaccine, who got some form of COVID. The problem is if you look at the two numbers underneath, or the two numbers side by side, the difference between this is, so that's the relative risk reduction you get 95%, but in, in absolute numbers, that's the total number of people who actually got any kind of COVID right. between the two. You look at under the number eight there on symptomatic COVID, you have... 18,198 and people who didn't, that's vac vaccinated people and who didn't get the vaccine, 18,325. Those two numbers are the numbers of people in both categories, vaccinated and unvaccinated, who didn't get anything. Right. So out of almost 36, 37,000 people, uh, pretty much all of them, except for the combination of 162 plus eight, which is 170, so out of 36, 37,000 people, only, th only uh, 170 actually got any symptoms. I, the vast majority of people in the trials, vaccinated or unvaccinated, didn't get any, didn't contract any kind of, didn't have any symptoms from COVID. Right. Uh, so that's the absolute risk, uh, risk reduction. So if you basically look at those two numbers, the difference between those two numbers, 18,198 and 18,325 is 0.7%. So that's where the absolute risk reduction is only 0.7% from getting the vaccine. Jesus H. But that's not what the headlines were no, conveying to people. No, that's where that 95% number comes from. Everyone was sold so with the notion, not maybe not the exact claim, but the notion yeah. that people took away was a 95% yeah. reduction. But, well, well uh, sign me up. Well, the idea... The idea two, please. The idea between those numbers is you expand it out from 40,000 participants. So you have 40,000 participants. And... You expand that to 40 well, million. Well... well we will say you have, 40, you have those 43,000 43, participants and something like whatever it is, 99% of them did not have any COVID symptoms whatsoever, both vaccinated and unvaccinated. Uh, but then, like I said, to get this 95% between the ones that actually did get something, how many were in the, in the vaccinated group and how many were in the, the unvaccinated group. And you compare those two, like I was just saying, and you get this 95%. If you expanded it out to from 40,000 to... 40 million or or i don't know if you'd have to do the math basically but like for example if you multiplied those that 162 who got symptomatic covid by if you include if you if you so that's out of out of uh, 20,000 people so if you multiply that by 10 that would be 200,000 by 10 uh, 2 million by ten, by, by, by multiply by ten thousand or a hundred thousand to get up to maybe, uh, you know, a billion people or two billion people, that number one hundred and sixty-two would go up to maybe something like sixteen million, you know. So you can expand that out and you say, well, then the only thing you could argue in that case is to say, well, we don't want sixteen million people to die, you know. But then yeah, <laughs> but it, so the thing is, the, the point about all this is that it's untested. They don't know what they're talking about, and this actually speaks directly to a pro one of the problems which I don't think I mentioned before, but the one thing you have not heard, uh, one thing that's been missing throughout this entire episode of the past 18 months is any reporting, or maybe there was one or two, but I didn't see any basically, and it should have been front and center all the time in reporting on, on this pandemic, was how many people in the world are estimated to have contracted, come in contact with SARS-CoV-2? They do that all the time with the flu. They have done it every year going back. They estimate the number of people number N. that spread, that, that contract across the world that yeah. probably came in contact with the flu based on the way viruses spread, based on the way they know that flu spread and stuff. And then they can come up with an estimated number of people who died from the flu, again, based on an estimation because nobody, they don't know, not doing tests for flu or whatever, but 
Anyway. That's how they come up with those figures annually. That, yeah, yeah. So when you so hear 60,000 in winter 2017, right, 2018 right, in the UK. Right, that's an estimate. It's an estimate. Because the people are just coming in and dying with kind of respiratory, you know, usually with comorbidities, but, you know, having, having respiratory distress or whatever, and they die and they say, well, it's a good chance since it's a winter that person probably had flu. No tests are done. Probably flu has contributed to, contribute to their death. Therefore, we'll put this down. We'll put this down in the statistics for flu deaths. We'll not put them down as having died from the flu because we never did that and we never will do that because flu doesn't kill anybody. It's nearly always, it's an, um, invariably with uh, co-factor. Co comorbidities. But we'll put it down for, just for statistics point of view, we'll put it down to so we have an idea roughly of how many people die from with the flu or as a result of complications from the flu. So the point is they've done this all the time for, for decades with the flu. So why can't, there's no reason they cannot estimate based on their past experience how many people around the world have contracted or come in contact with how much is spread and how much many people contract the SARS-CoV-2. What would the estimations be? I mean, when you look at the flu, they say like, uh, they, they talk about figures like a billion, two billion people this flu season. So if you put a billion or two billion people or even more, depending on how you, you assessed it, uh, but certainly in the billions of people who came have come in contact, contact with this flu over the past two years, remember, because it was around in late summer 2019. So right now, we're at the point where it's been at least around for two years. How far has the virus spread around the world in two years? And this is it's, it being around at least six months before lockdowns were imposed. More like nine months before lockdowns were imposed, when air travel and everything was happening, right? How many people have contracted it? And then just look at the numbers, the official numbers, and we'll even take their official numbers. We won't quibble over, <coughs> over with COVID or by COVID. Mm -hmm. We'll just take their official numbers mm -hmm. of people who have died from COVID. And what is it now? Four we'll million or something? Place it in its proper context, some, which is the baseline of some, contact with the virus. Right. Four million people or something like that. Give me four million as a percentage of four billion. Right. But the, it's about 0 0.1. Right. Which places it smack in the same range as seasonal respiratory virus illnesses. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, that's, I'm saying that's just an estimate. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm saying, right. w why have they not done those estimates in order to calm people down and give them a realistic understanding of just how deadly this supposed deadly pandemic actually is? And that has been missing, conspicuously absent from media reporting on this for the past 18 months. And I don't know why they haven't done that, although I have a good idea. But anyway. Um, That's the media for it. It's, it's never, they, they can always get away with saying, well, hang on, factually, we said everything right there. But the lie by omission, lies by omission are incorrect or lacking context. Right. And it can always sneak your way out of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you can get a, a Snopes report to say, well, actually, no, we did a detailed analysis of exactly the claims that were made and we find it mostly true or mostly false. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's just bias. Because they leave out context. Yeah, but it's bias and they've got, they've got an agenda clearly and everybody has an agenda. It's not like some kind of nefarious thing. Everybody's got their agenda, which is their perspective on things, how they see the world and they're going to push their own perspective and governments have their own perspective. And for most people, their most ordinary people, their perspective is just what they've learned and what they believe and what the, the information that they've, they've absorbed. But it's reasonable to suggest that at the higher levels of government, it's not just what they believe and they're pushing what they believe like ordinary people do, but rather very often there is an actual agenda in the sense of a you know, less than wholesome agenda. I mean, one thing would be, I don't know. I mean, really, can you discount it? Like if you look at the graph, we don't have it right now, but if you look at the graph for Moderna, for example, their share price, going back five or 10 years, pretty much flat line. I mean, it's at a certain price, but it's pretty much stable. And then 2020 comes along and it's boom, it's like 10 times, 10 times the price. Right there's a financial uh, motivation. An Are we one. going to, who's going to put their hand up and say there's absolutely no way that a financial motivation for pushing vaccines on people is, has to be discounted, that it cannot play any part in the pushing of vaccines at all. How naive do you have to be how long do you have to have not lived in this world to be able to, 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 you know, discount the idea that money doesn't matter right. to people and especially people in positions of power? Um, of course, it matters to everybody, but, you know. Um, I know you have the, a lot more to say. Well, on no, I don't have much more to say on, on it. On the Rona. I don't really have much more to say on it, except that the claim that we mentioned previously that seems to be this unspoken claim uh, or justification for pushing vaccines 
on or mandating vaccines on everybody is that people who don't get the vaccines are uh, kind of like uh, petri dishes yeah or kind of like test tubes you showed me that they're last factories night. for uh mutations yeah and she of, um brzezinski said it again right. there yeah they're little pandemics within themselves right uh basically the claim is the idea is and it's unspoken and you don't hear people saying it like that the israeli uh, prime minister he just said you're hurting people mm -hmm. by not getting vaccinated but he didn't explain how you're hurting people or what the science or, or the logic is behind the idea that people who are not vaccinated are hurting the vaccinated and even even vaccinated people i think would say well if i'm vaccinated i'm okay right it doesn't matter i'm vaccinated I'm, I'm, I'm immune from I'm, I'm protected against the virus right from the virus floating around or from it in other people or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah so it's not said it's just it's a meme almost that that has spread and i've watched it spread over the past couple of weeks a few weeks whatever that unvaccinated people are some kind of a danger they're they're a mutation factory and it's in the media as well that they're basically a, a, f a mutation factory in and of themselves for new strains of the coronavirus that may be able to overcome or that the vaccines aren't don't provide protection against and the imp imp implied point they're making is that if we just pushed and got it to work a zero covid policy and got 100 percent vaccination rate it would be over yeah, but is that scientifically well, well, no, possible? Uh, no, it's not. Has I mean, it ever happened again, before? Again, that's why you don't hear these people. And that's why I think you don't hear these people, government ministers, government you know, politicians, whoever, media people, actually referring to any scientific basis for that claim that people who don't get vaccinated are some kind of mutation factories who are spewing out mutations of this virus that then threaten vaccinated people because there is no hard, solid science behind that. In fact, most of... In, in the history of of of, the, of uh, in, in immunology and, and uh, virology and the the study of vaccines and their effects, the thing that has always uh, been highlighted and there's you know papers going back you know decades on this is that when people are vaccinated, it's the vaccine that will most likely produce mutations because it basically challenges hmm. the virus. It's the same as in a good analogy would be antibiotic resistance you know where basically you have a bacteria and people take antibiotics which is a pill you know a, a medication to fight to kill off a bacteria but after a certain period of time of that antibiotic uh, doing its job the virus with a kind of strange kind of will of or sorry the bacteria in this case in the case of antibiotics with a strange kind of will of its own to survive mutates in the face of that extreme threat to its existence right it mutates in order to overcome the antibiotic and you get super bugs or antibiotic resistant bugs the same concept in, in in broad terms applies to vaccines where vaccines challenge and threaten uh, a virus and eventually a virus will because because the vaccine you know provokes a very strong and often too strong immune response mm -hmm. to kill off the virus that the virus eventually after a certain period of time may well mutate into a new strain that the that the vaccine is useless against and that is a known phenomenon it's called um vaccine escape well it's called vaccine escape it's called uh, antibody dependent, dependent enhancement, enhancement and there's a few other terms basically this this is what um this reminds me of what the big pharma vaccine maker turned whistleblower was saying back in january or february mm -hmm. geert van den bosch yeah he, he was saying a really bad he idea. had a cassandra moment where he's like i'm not against the, the vaccines in general but obviously i produce them and, and others really chimed in and said well that could be because he's had got conflict of interest here but he was warning specifically that the current vaccines we're pushing out mm -hmm. were, were were going to put pressure mid pandemic we're going to put pressure on the variants mm -hmm. To mutate into something more dangerous. Mm -hmm. Just put up, just to, to validate that's only one example. Leaky vaccine, Scotty, uh, JPEG. Um, is it from the Financial Times? And I think it's from quite a few years ago. Uh, not that many. 2015, five years ago, five six years ago. 
virology, the problem with leaky vaccines, it's just a headline, you can go and look at the article yourself, fresh evidence supports a theory that some vaccines lead to the evolution of more virulent viral strains. It's um, it's something that, you know, it's well hard known. to define, but it's well known as an idea and a theory, and it, you know, it makes sense from a from a from a scientific point of view, from an epi epidemiological point of view, right. uh, the I mean the British government even in the Sage meeting minutes from July seventh I think even referenced this that um, that in in mass vaccination you run the risk of producing variants from the vaccination. They also say you know when when the virus is 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 widely spread and like predominant, and you vaccinate people. Uh, en masse, large numbers, you run the risk because you're, you're basically spreading the net very wide in terms of vaccinating all these people. Yeah. You're giving the virus a lot of opportunity to mutate, you know, because each person therefore is a kind of like a little test tube or a lab. But here, again, it's this common thing that we seem to, seem to see happening, which is the relative situation is turned on the head and turned on its head. The opposite right. is true. So right now we have the accusation that it's unvaccinated people who are the little petri, uh, dishes. petri dishes for for mutant versions of this virus, when in fact it's more likely to be the vaccinated people who are who are producing who will who will have. Not say, not say, I'm not saying that they're producing it. I'm saying that the chances, the risk yeah. of a super virus uh, like a superbug, uh, a, a vaccine resistant strain of this virus is more likely to be produced as a result of the vaccination program mm. rather than people just come in contact with it. Uh, so a worst case scenario isn't just that the people who've gotten the vaccine so far were wasting their time and risking their own personal health. They may be but prolonging it. But they may the have pandemic. actually, rather than, rather than stamped out the virus from their lives, they may have actually locked it in to all of our lives. Or prolonging the, the yeah, prolonging the pandemic, basically. They're prolonging it by, by, by this mad push for vaccination. And I think that's part of the reason why they want, especially the vaccine makers themselves in, 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 in league with government, are pushing for uh, the mass vaccination of everybody. Because if everybody gets vaccinated, then you can muddy the waters on any new strain that pops out. But if you have a, sex, a good section of the population who are unvaccinated and a new strain pops out amongst the, vac the, vac the vaccinated people, yeah, then that's going to, it's not only going to show that their vaccines aren't working like the Israelis are saying, but that in fact their vaccines have actually produced a, a more virulent strain of that, of that virus. And that, in fact, it would have been far better for no one to have been vaccinated in the first place. Now, they don't want that to happen at all, at all costs. And the best thing they can do right now is to make sure that there are no unvaccinated people in the population. So if and when a new strain comes out, they can muddy the waters and say, well, it came from this or that or the other. But if it comes out within the vaccinated population, it's going to be very hard not to draw the conclusion. And there'll be studies done to see that it actually happened as a result of vaccine escape or vaccine uh, Right. What's it called? Vaccine... I can't remember the actual term, but it's um, vaccine-mediated uh, enhancement or something like that, basically. Basically, that the vaccine helped the virus to mutate into a more more, more virulent strain. Okay. W with this in mind, I want to listen to... This is a regular daily update given by a government uh, spokesman for the New South Wales government in Australia. Can we play this video, Scotty? This is him two days ago giving, matter of factly, the latest on COVID cases in New South Wales. We want to listen to the end, especially because I had to do a double take. <laughs> We've had anecdotal evidence that fully vaxxed nursing homes are seeing outbreaks. Um, so far, the anecdotes are usually brushed off. Well, it's because there remain a few out there who don't, you know, under the petri dishes of these problems but this spokesman gives some details like that it, 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 anecdotally anyway it, it, he's saying that covid is go ahead and play it do you, do you have it scotty first oh yeah here he is okay um 141 people are in hospital with covid at present and 43 are in intensive care 18 of whom require ventilation so this is a very serious disease of those 141 60 um, are under the age of 55 and 28 under the age of 35. And of the 43 people in intensive care, uh, one is in their teens, seven are in their 20s, 
three are in their 30s, 14 are in their 50s, and 12 are in their 60s, and six are in their 70s. So this is affecting people of all ages with very serious disease. Okay. All but one um, are vaccinated. One person has just received one dose of vaccine. I'm sorry, what? All, all but one, one are vaccinated? Um, are vaccinated. One person has just received one dose of vaccine. Oh, so, so all are double vaccinated. And basically, all are vaccinated except one who's, who's only had received one, one, one dose. Yeah. So all, all of the COVID cases currently in New South Wales, the people on the ventilators, remember we saw the, the ad from some other sick government. Was it the Australian government? Huh. With their ad with the, the woman on the respirator going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ones currently going. <laughs> <laughs> were double jabbed in Australia. Yeah. And, and then they got ended up in the hospital on the respirator. The point is that has to be investigated. That but any any if any sanity prevails, which it doesn't, unfortunately, but in a sane world, that would immediately be investigated to find out uh, what's going on with those people. Are you gonna what are you gonna say that they're all in hospital because because of because of uh, because of the petri cause, dishes cause of, of the non vaccinated because of, people. of unvaccinated people who aren't in the hospital? I mean, how does that make any sense? You got it. You got to look Very at it. You got to find out what. In fact, you, may, you might even want to take samples from them and look at the strain. What strain is it? Is it the Delta strain the one that's been around? The one that Pfizer said and Moderna said and AstraZeneca said that their vaccines are effective against. If it's that Delta strain, then their vaccines don't work. At least for those people. Um, but you also, if it's a new strain, you need to look at where it came from. And I mean, you know, you, to, you just need to do some research and find out. What's going on there, you know? But that's not happening. All they want to do is talk, is scare people, with with uh, with claims that this is a deadly disease that everybody of, of all ages is is, is in threat, is, is in danger from. Worse than the vaccine not saving those people, is the only reason those people are in hospital, because they got the vaccine. That was that's, that's an important question to ask as well. Yeah. These are questions that need to be asked, but they're not going to be asked, and they're not going to be pursued. Because it goes against the narrative and it goes against the agenda, which is to vaccinate the entire population. In the middle of trying to vaccinate the entire population, when they spent so much time and effort and money and, and you know, words on claiming that this is how we're going to solve this problem, they can't turn around in the middle of it and say, oops, vaccine, vaccination was a really bad idea. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have done it. Uh, let's stop. It's not going to happen. So they're going to double down on, the, on, 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 their, on their narrative and, and keep pushing it. And there is not going to be any, there'll be some research done, but it won't be, it won't be allowed to reach the light of day. You know? Indeed. And we have one article we want to show about on doubling down from ABC News, the CDC advisory committee's response to the growing anecdotal evidence that being fully vaccinated with two shots isn't enough. Let's have a look. Uh, Boosters. Once a month. Their answer is, get more shots. Okay, 44% of breakthrough infections are immunocompromised people. What does that say? Breakthrough infections basically is their term for infections that people who are vaccinated, yeah. pe people who are vaccinated get, get, get another infection, get symptoms and end up in hospital or whatever, or maybe not in hospital, but at least get symptoms. So the point there is immunocompromised people, 44%. The other, uh, there's another 54%, I suppose, who are not immunocompromised, but who knows? I don't know what's going on with them. But it speaks to the fact that a big part of this entire problem, or the big, a, big, a big part of the, the, the reality, the truth behind this entire pandemic is that the vast majority of people, as we've said before, who are, who provided the statistics for for you know the pictures of people in hospitals or the statistics of the number of people in the hospital and people sick and stuff it was among immunocompromised people um but it's interesting now that it's only 44 percent that means let's assume it's it's true that 50 percent 54 percent are not immunocompromised again that gets back to the problem is the problem of the possibility that some kind of new and more vir more virulent strain of the virus has appeared that is maybe uh, posing a threat to people who are not in that category that the previous strain was a threat to, i.e. immunocompromised people. Now, there are more people who are in danger from uh, a new strain um, that are in, in relatively good health, but that that new strain may well 
have come about as a result of this mass vaccination campaign, campaign right in the middle of a pandemic, which several people who are in a position to know have said is a really bad idea because of the possibility of yeah, vaccine escape slash mm -hmm. uh, antibody dependent enhancement still of viruses. the bigger context remains that it's all very complicated it's we're very complicated but the, we're only given a, a brief basic overview of this but the stuff that we're talking about is true i mean it, it goes into a lot more detail and the truth of the matter is, is that even people virologists and immunologists aren't sure yeah about how that whole uh breakthrough uh, infections and how the the whole very very complex system inside your body works with viruses and your immune system and all that kind of stuff and especially when you've got immunocompromised people where viruses can opportunistic viruses can take you know take advantage of a person's compromised immune system uh and and, and you know even infect immune cells and, how does and, the and, and, injected and soup themselves up and all that kind of stuff how that how does the virus interact with retroviruses which make up 60 percent six six percent or something of our genome they're basically playing with fire and they don't really know what they're talking about and as we've said in previous shows these vaccines have not received fda approval the trials are very limited certainly every other vaccine that 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 has been released uh, for public consumption has spent years during trials first with animals then with uh, and actually on that point the reason why you didn't have a SARS or MERS vaccine was because when they did the trials on animals, they saw that the vaccine that they, that they attempted to create for SARS and MERS, which mm -hmm. are uh, uh, both coronavirus, coronavirus or um, respiratory virus similar to coronavirus, this coronavirus, um, that they noticed that they didn't produce the vaccine because they noticed that in animal trials that uh, the vaccine was producing or causing uh, antibody dependent enhancement i was creating a more virulent strain of the of the of the virus that they were trying to trying to defeat the vaccine caused a more virulent strain of the virus they were trying to defeat yeah that's why you don't have a SARS or a MERS vaccine i mean you can look that up that's a matter of record so but they say of course this one is all good that's not going to happen with this one. There was no evidence that that happened with this one. But the bottom line is, as people have... Because many, many people new technology, saying, mRNA vaccine. Yeah, but, you know, the bottom line is, I think anybody with any morality or integrity, uh, any virologist or immunologist would admit that it is definitely experimental. And, I mean, the trials are officially still ongoing. The trials are happening in vivo. You know what I mean? They're happening in real time. They're not happening the way they should happen with a small select group of animals and people over a long period of time. They're happening after the fact, after the, 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 the public vaccination of millions of, well, hundreds of millions of people. That's what we're going to find out. We'll find out one way or another. Maybe it won't be publicly released or it won't be publicly admitted, but we'll definitely find out over the next few years during which a normal vaccine trial should be taking place with a select group of people. We're going to find out uh, what it what those trials produced as a result of vaccinating hundreds of millions of people around the world. And you can bet the published results will need some reinterpretation for sure by Joe Quinn here on Newsreel. We'll be, we'll be keeping Baby. an eye on it. At the end of last week's show, we um, rounded up with a, a look at the crazy rainfall event that took place in Western well, Germany. I before we go there, okay. I just wanted to, you know, I think it's important in these times, despite what we say, to not take what we say necessarily seriously and do your own research. But at the same time, you should look to your your leaders, your responsible and erudite, informed, knowledgeable leaders wise. to keep you and wise to keep you on the straight and narrow and give you a good dose of reality and you know, make sure you're 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 up to speed on on what's really happening, right? Mm -hmm. And the, no better person to look to than uh, our illustrious esteemed president. Mr. Joe Biden, ah. and I think we're going to have a few words. Leader from him of the free now, world, just to kind of put things straight, and so and really put people's minds at ease about this whole situation, so that they can, 
you know, sleep peacefully in the bed at night. So if we just have a few words from Joe there, uh, his recent words at a town hall in um, somewhere in America, small town America. Here's Joe. Joe's going to tell you what is going on. He actually, yeah, go ahead. Let's listen to Joe. You, you got the vaccination? Yeah. Are, are, you, are you okay? I mean, you seem, no, it works. Or, you you know, or, 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 or the mom and dad or, 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 or the neighbor or when you go to church or when you're, no, no I, I, I really mean it. There are trusted interlocutors. Think of the people. If, if your kid wanted to find out whether or not there were, there's a man on the moon or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, something. Yeah. Or, you Absolutely. know, whether those aliens are here or not. Yeah. You know, yeah, who yeah. are the people that vaccines. talk to beyond the kids who love talking about it? To a vaccine? Exactly. I don't know. They talk to vaccines or <laughs> exactly. something? Exactly. Um, right on, Joe. And if you talk to your inter inter interlocutors and your mom and pop, and and if like who who do the kids want to talk to about the aliens? You know, I mean, um, and uh, you got the vaccine. Uh, are you okay? I mean, so I mean, no, 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 no. Really, I mean, if if you if you want to know about the mom and pop or the aliens, just talk to your vaccine. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I would write that off to senile dementia, but we have another video. Go ahead. This is Joe, like, asked, that's Joe in the town hall. Mm. After the event, he was accosted by another reporter, probably one not on his side, so to speak, of the other political persuasion, who tried to catch him out with a question. Mm. And his response was totally different. Um, can we play this one, Scotty? Have a listen here. This is the same night. Are there people in the Republican Party who think we're sucking the blood out of kids? I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Are there people in the Democratic Party who want us to... Mr. Party? President, speak up... So, now, when the there's multiple levels of looking at this. First of all, that's completely inappropriate for the President of the United States to say. But the other one is, that is an amazingly sharp comeback. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. On the moment, spur of the moment, well, bam, know. in the mouth. <laughs> Some of the blood out of kids is... I, he's referring to the, you know, yeah. the other side's QAnon thing. They right. were all like pedophiles mm. and stuff. And it's, what a retort. Yep. No prep, bam. Yeah, he obviously didn't like that accusation. You know, he doesn't mind about the when he's asked about the vaccines, but don't ask about defunding the police or... or uh, Which, of course, Democratic Party were explicitly sure, endorsing. Sure, yeah. To get him elected, and now that he's elected, oh what? Us no. It's a conspiracy theory. Sucking the blood out of kids, not us. Just think your mom and pop and the aliens and the, and, and the vaccine and and, 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 and interlocutors and, 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 and alien, aliens, yeah. Did you get the vaccine? Are you okay? Yeah. All right. It's yeah. not. It's good. No. It's not. It didn't, yeah. it didn't kill you, no. Eh, a bit of my soul, maybe, but that's okay. okay. Right. Who needs that? Anyway, uh, just checking. Uh, yeah, so um, meanwhile. Okay, want to round up with a In the wild weather news desk. Weather news. Over the weather desk. Yeah, well, we looked at the one in Germany because last week, because it was just wow. Um, the worst national disaster that country has seen at least since. Second World War. Second World War. Um, and yeah, so it's been happening in, in other countries uh, in more recent days. First video, this is this is from China. Let's have a look at this. This is um, Henan province in northern China. Um, actually, it says it's Inner Mongolia. Anyway, it was a swathe of northern China. Um, the city of Zheng, I think it's Zhenghu. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. Okay. Yeah, it turned down a bit. This region got... An entire year's worth of rain in 48 hours. That's one of two major dams giving well, bye way. Bye. That's a lot of water coming out there. It's a lot of water. Imagine its entire annual rainfall in 48 hours. And it's not a dry region or anything. You don't want to be down. Gets rainfall in, you know. You don't want to be downstream of that. Uh, surprisingly, I'm only hearing like something in the region of 50, 60 dead. Maybe they saw it coming mm -hmm. and they evacuated or something. Or they could be covering it up. It's the Chinese, right? They never tell Chai us. Um, yeah. What else we got? That's, that's China. Mongolia. Um, Mongolia. Same time frame, three days ago. Uh, Eastern India, Mumbai. 
I've, this is either Mumbai or a neighboring city. There were a couple of cities <clears throat> that got slammed with just ungodly amounts of rainfall in a day. Cars washing down the street. So this is going to become an increasingly familiar sight everywhere. Funk. Um, I don't have any numbers to hand on what kind of volumes. Obviously, India gets, you know, monsoon season and in a sense, it's not so unusual this time of year. But it's still a lot of rain, even for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, finally, northern Turkey. This is 22nd. Three days ago, in Af Atvin, Artvin, that is uh, almost on the coast of the Black Sea in northern Turkey. Now, uh, again, I don't have the figures to hand, but the city next door, roughly in the same northeast corner of Turkey, had the same scenes. Trucks and cars floating down the street in a separate rainfall incident last week. Oh. Crazy. People better get, get prepped. For sure. Well, what are you suggesting? They get rubber dinghies? Yeah, yeah. Raincoats, boots, and um, learn how to build a dam. <laughs> learn how to fix a dam. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, uh, definitely that kind, of st that kind of stuff. Far more frequent. It's happening. It's building up. Um, of course, that's not the only problem that's facing people. There's all sorts of other uh, environmental issues going on. Possible earthquakes, volcanoes, tornadoes, tsunamis. Um, yeah, you got to keep your eyes on the on the sky and on the ground around you, and you know, stay alert. You know, um, but people can't realistically plan around these things because you never know where the localized no, but factors come together. I know, yeah, bam. but you know, just a little bit of preparation, at least in your own head. You know what I mean? Being aware of it, not just being sleepy, like you know what I mean, right. like sleepy Joe there. Yeah. Um, what about um, what about any, what was going on in our chat room <coughs> as we were uh, chatting? Was there much, uh, much there, more commentary? <coughs> or there was uh, an interesting translation of something that French President Macron said today. Oh yeah, uh, they definitely are doubling down on their narrative, and so quickly. Do you remember Lobachevsky's paramoralisms? Check what President Macaroon said today with a Macaroon. straight face. It, this is a translation. So, uh, if tomorrow you infect your father, your mother, or myself, I am a victim of your freedom when you had the possibility of having something to protect you and me. Mm. And in the name of your freedom, you may go be having a serious form of the virus and you will arrive at this hospital. It is all these personnel who will have to take care of you and perhaps give up taking someone else that's mm. not freedom it's called irresponsibility mm -hmm. egoism if you love freedom if you love your freedom and if you respect others the only thing you can do is give get it vaccinated up. is give it up when science provides weapons they must be used ah. like the atomic bomb i guess the implication of bear being those people the non-vax the resistors the idiots as the CNN mm. anchor claimed that the idiot percentage of the population, the implication be that they're costing us materially, if nothing else, like to our healthcare. It's like what they were saying before about, well, obese people and smokers, mm. they're all costing us money and yeah, couldn't yeah. we just do away with them? Well, the same similar thing from um, the Israeli prime minister. He was ranting about the costs mm -hmm. to everyone else from these people. Mm, Hang us. on a second. How much has anyone done... A calculation of how much governments have forked over to Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, mm -hmm. etc. Well, just look at the share price for these free vaccines, right? You mm -hmm. could just go to your pharmacy, put your arm out. It didn't cost except anything. Yeah, it's just, it just rained down from the sky. It didn't yeah. cost us anything. Except no, it cost you, the tax taxpayer, dollars. infrastructure, in hundreds your of billions. Yep, that could have been put to schools, infrastructure, healthcare, education campaigns. Education. Maybe even proper uh, medication. Uh, Ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine. <gasps> you um, said bad words. Bad Too bad. Words. For, Sorry, uh, they're banned. Bad no, they're bad. Bad don't, don't take those. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think uh, we'll probably leave it there for this week. Um, we've said all we're, all we're allowed to say. 
and um, we've reached our censorship limit. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get any cut more. Off. We're well, going to <laughs> hammer will come down, and that'll be the end of it. But um, yeah. I just, yeah, so just want to thank the our listeners, our viewers, well not listeners, viewers, and our chatters, and don't forget to subscribe and to like, and thanks for commenting, and as a final word, I just want to say that, um, just remember that if your interlocutors and ask your mom and pop about the aliens, just, just, just get a vaccine, okay? See you later. Okay. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye. Can't stop the signal now.